Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here and today I am on some Monster Hunter World and I wanted to make a video that's going to give you guys some general tips on how to make pretty much every fight a lot easier. Now, early on in the game, a lot of the fights are honestly not that hard, but then you get to a certain point in the game where you might start to have some challenges. So if you want to make those fights easier, I'm going to talk about ways that you can do that. And trust me, it works great and this is just a really good general rule to kind of follow. So the first thing I want to talk about is your Monster Hunter Guide. This is a very important thing in the game, and it took me a while to actually figure this out, but once I did, I love this book. It helps a lot. The main thing is, as you're hunting monsters, you need to actually level those monsters up for your research. Once you have level one, so if you encounter a monster that you've never fought before, you don't know anything about it, try to find some tracks of it, discover it, maybe fight it a little bit, Try to figure out what it could be weak to before you actually fight it. If you can actually just guess, that's a good idea. But once you actually do fight it and you level it up, go and look at your hunter's notes and look at the monster field guide. That way you can actually see the monsters because you can actually see in here what every monster is weak to. So you have all the different elements and some are weaker to different elements than others, especially once you get to stronger monsters. So you will actually see three stars. That means that they are extremely weak to that. And if you see an X, it means that they are immune to that. If it's one star, it just means that they're pretty much not going to take really any extra damage. And if it's two star, it's pretty much okay to use against them. But what you really want is the three star. So if you can actually match your element or your ailment to that, you're going to have a lot better time fighting that particular monster. So this is always a really good idea to actually look at. Some monsters you will see that it will be three stars for fire and three stars for water. So you actually have to figure out what that means. And it will tell you, it will say when covered in mud, meaning that you will actually be able to do more damage with water while this monster is covered in mud. But once that mud is gone, then fire will be its weakness. So of course, if you're playing by yourself, you're not going to be able to really do anything with that. But if you're playing with a friend, one player could rock fire, the other one could rock water and make this monster a lot easier to deal with. So that's pretty much your ideal situation. Anytime you're having trouble with a monster, or if you've never fought a monster before, it's always a really good idea to try to level it up to level one. That way you can actually figure out what is its strengths and what is its weaknesses, and pretty much take advantage of that. So the next step that I would recommend, and this is where things get a little grindy, but that is what this game's all about, is actually grinding. So when you're playing the game and you have your favorite weapon, your go-to weapon, I think almost everyone does. You start the game out and you play around with a couple weapons. You figure out which one you really like. And that's one you're probably going to stick with for a long time. And maybe down in the future, you will actually switch. But for the majority of your playthrough, you'll probably be using the same weapon. And in my case, I'm using twin swords. I love the twin swords. So what did I do? Because of what I'm talking about here when it comes to these different elements, I went ahead and made every single twin sword that I can make and I leveled them all up to the maximum that I can get them to right now with the different elements. So I have thunder, I have water, that's a hammer right there. I have been playing around with different weapons as well, which is always a good thing. But as you can see, my main weapon for sure is the twin swords. Right here, this is interesting. I want to talk about this because some people might ask and I've seen a lot of people talking on the forums. What does it mean when the element is grayed out? That means that element is not active. You will not get any bonus from that element. So if you see that early on, I would recommend skipping it. Don't waste your material. Don't waste your money getting a weapon that is grayed out. You have to get a particular perk and you really want to get that perk to level three. Now, once you actually get to a certain point of the story, you can get some armor that will give you one level of that perk. But one level of that perk is only going to unlock 33% of that element. That is not really good. So instead, I would recommend skipping all that. Wait until you get the chance to actually get a level 3 free element. That's the name of the perk. Once you have that, then you can definitely take advantage of these very powerful weapons. Because the free element weapons are definitely very strong. And I really want to play around with them. But I'm not really at that point of the story yet where I can actually get a level 3 charm. That's what I would recommend. Make a charm with free element because I think that would probably be your best bet. But as you can see, I have pretty much a bunch of weapons. 
all with different elements and this is just a really good thing to do because anytime I'm encountering a monster and I don't know what it is first things first I'm gonna look for its tracks I'm gonna try to level it up I'm gonna go and talk to my research people I'm gonna try to get a level then I'm gonna look at my book look at my monster field guide and I'm gonna see what it's weak to and if it's weak to ice I'm gonna try to use ice now sometimes your weapons might not be so good for example this ice weapon I really don't like it all that much I mean it's okay but I really love my lightning weapon and I really love my water weapon I think these are my best weapons now if I actually look in my book and I actually see that the monster has a two star for water I might just go ahead and go with water just because I know that this is going to be really strong against that monster still I don't have to go for the three star so that is something you can do because there are going to be different weapons with more powerful elements and just more powerful weapons that you might actually prefer to use. So keep that in mind. You can always use a weapon against a monster. And if it's two stars, you're still going to do a lot of damage with that element. You could always use really whatever weapon you want as long as you have two stars. If it's one star or if it's an X, you have to pretty much just give up on it and switch your weapon. Because you're going to have a really bad time if you don't. But this is a really grindy thing to do, obviously, to go and get every element. But if you're ever stuck, that's when I would definitely recommend doing this. Because for the most part, Thunder and Water, I personally feel, can carry you through the majority of the game. Most enemies are actually pretty weak to Water and Thunder, from what I've noticed. So you can pretty much just use these weapons for the vast majority of the game. And honestly, these weapons are not that hard to get, and they're not that hard to level up. So that's a really good thing. But later on, you might actually need your ice weapon more, and this will be something that you'll have to go and get. Same with maybe poison weapons and stuff. But at least for my twin sword user, I'm noticing that every single one of these ailments like sleep and paralyze, they're all hidden element. And that is really lame. And I want to use these, but unfortunately, I just can't right now. So let's go ahead and talk about the damage cap for elements, because this is another thing that you really have to pay attention to. Now you can actually go ahead and increase your elemental damage, which is really nice to be quite honest. You can actually increase it by a lot, especially if you actually take a look at one of these charms because these charms are actually pretty ridiculous. I mean, look at that. The first level of this lightning charm or at least this lightning attack effect is 30 lightning. Then it says 60, which is kind of lying. I don't really know why they worded like this. I'm sure it's some type of weird percentage or something that I don't understand. But it says 60, it says 100, it says 100, it says 100, and you also get 5% and 10%. This is pretty much it for every single different element in the game if you're going to try to boost it. But there is a cap. This is very important to know because you don't want to waste your time with this. I personally think it is a really good idea to make some charms to match your weapon. So if you're going to switch your weapon, let's say you're hunting a monster and you're like, I know that monster is weak to lightning, so I'm going to use my lightning weapon. Go ahead and swap out your charm too. You can go ahead and do that and you can boost the attack of your lightning and you will do even more damage to that monster. It's going to make it a lot easier for you. But you have to pay attention to if you are hitting the cap or not. So let me quickly show you this. What you need to do to actually take a look at it is you actually need to go into your equipment info, which is going to be here. And if you look on the right side, you'll see attack and you will actually see my element, which is 160 meaning that my original element was 120. You can see that on the left there. And because of how I boosted it, I got 40 extra points of damage for my element. And that is the cap. You will know it's the cap once you actually see that orange. So that's actually really important to pay attention to. Now, although I am boosting my lightning element by a lot, 40 points doesn't seem like a lot. Now, of course, as you actually get stronger weapons, that cap is going to increase. And I personally feel like, although I'm not sure, that the hidden element weapons are going to be very powerful. Their caps are going to be huge. So if you have those weapons, then you could definitely go ahead and boost that lightning element or that water element a lot. And you're going to see a lot of benefits from that. Where if you're not using a hidden element weapon, you might not see that much. But I still think it's worth boosting because you have to understand, monsters take a lot of extra damage from elements if you're actually going against them and you're using their weakness. It is really crazy, especially if you're playing with a group of people all doing that because you will just murder the monster super quick. Even if it's a really hard monster, you will just have so much DPS on that monster that he will just die. And it makes it so much easier when they die faster because it's less risky, of course. 
So that's the main thing I wanted to point out. I wanted to talk about hidden element. There are different ways of getting hidden element. One thing that you can do, of course, is go ahead and forge a hidden element necklace. All you actually have to do with this is just go ahead and talk to the guy, the blacksmith, and go to charms, and you can actually see all these different effects. Now, from my understanding, these will actually unlock as you find armor with these perks. So once you get to a certain point of the story, I don't want to spoil anything, you're going to have an armor piece that's going to have free element on it. So keep that in mind. That is one free element that you could potentially make if that's what you want to get. Later on, a little bit later on, you also get another armor set that will also have a free element on there if you want to play around with that. And you can make a charm. So right there, that would be level 3 free element. So I could do it right now. It's just that, I don't know, I like my armor set the way it is. And I just don't know if it's going to be worth it to try to go for free element. I think the best bet at the end, end game, once you're super OP and you've been grinding for a long time, is to actually go ahead and get this charm right here, the Awakening Charm. And level this up to level 3. Right now, I can make it, but I can't level it up. If you really want to play around with Hidden Element, then you can go ahead and get this charm, get the armor set at a certain point of the game that will actually unlock this charm for you. And also, a little bit later on in the game, you will find another armor set that will also have it. And that's where I'm currently at in the story. I've been kind of playing with friends, and we've been kind of waiting for each other. So I haven't really been like super trying to get through the story or anything like that. I've been kind of taking my time and actually having fun grinding and playing with my friends. And I think that is the best way to actually play this game. But I really did want to share this with you guys just as a little bit of a guide, I guess, to making enemies die a lot faster. My Twin Sword build right now is incredibly overpowered, and one of the main reasons for that is just because I always look at the monster, either I know it from previous times of fighting it, or I will always just look at my book and see what is it weak to, and I'll switch that element, especially if it's water or lightning, it's the best, because those are my favorite weapons right now, and I will go ahead and equip the charm to boost my lightning attack, you know, and I'll just go to town on that monster. And it makes it so much easier. So I really wanted to help you guys out if you're playing the game and you're kind of just sticking with a certain upgrade path. You're like, oh, I want to go for Blast because I think that's cool. And that's fine, but if you get to a point of the game where you're having a lot of trouble, you probably should go ahead and look at your field guy, look at the weaknesses, and make that weapon that will actually counteract that monster because you will be surprised on how much easier it will be. And of course, your armor... And a bunch of other things will play into it. And I am going to make a build video for this Twin Sword build I have right now. Although I'm not totally at the end game yet. This is kind of like, I don't know where I'm at in the story to be quite honest. Like maybe a little bit in the middle. But this is a really good build I'm rocking right now. So I did want to share that. And of course in the future too, I'm already playing around with different weapons like the long sword and the hammer. And I plan on pretty much using all of them and trying to think of different ways to use them really effectively. And combine different things from the amulets, from the armor, to really make them fun and interesting. So I will be coming out with build videos for this for sure. And probably some other tutorial stuff if I feel like I need to. But that's going to pretty much do it for this video. I just really wanted to talk about all this when it comes to these elements and your field guide. And how that will definitely help you through the game. And it gives you a lot of stuff to do because you're like, okay, I got to go grind this water weapon up or I got to go grind this ice weapon because I need it for this boss because I'm having trouble with him. So just always keep that in mind, guys. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and I really do hope that it has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? Be sure to subscribe for future videos and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day and peace. So